Welcome back to Poker Streams, your online source for information, tutorials, and other tidbits from the world of poker. This is the second episode in our ongoing series on pre-flop strategy. We'll be talking about playing the big pairs before the flop. In the previous episode, we introduced a number of popular pre-flop hand selections, comparing strategies recommended by Sklansky and Melmoth, Phil Helmuth, and Howard Lederer. Now, it's time to get into how to play specific groups of hands. We'll start out with the best of the best, the big pairs. The first group of hands we're going to look at are pocket aces and pocket kings. These are really easy to play since you always have the best hand before the flop. When you have one of these hands, you want to raise and re-raise, raise and re-raise, get as much money into the pot as possible, while at the same time protecting these powerhouse hands from being outdrawn. As Howard Lederer is quoted as saying, you need to protect aces like they were your firstborn. Pocket aces are the best two cards you can possibly have pre-flop, followed by pocket kings. Now I'm fond of saying that aces are great for winning small pots or losing big ones. The reason is that it's such a strong holding, you tend to put a lot of money into the pot, often not noticing when you've been outdrawn later on in the hand. Even worse, the amount of money that's in the pot can actually make it correct for your opponents to chase you down with all kinds of crazy draws. They're often getting fantastic pot odds to call you down with draws as weak as an inside straight draw or even smaller pocket pairs. The key to playing aces and kings is to limit the field. Your raises aren't just intended just to build the pot, but rather to eliminate opponents. This is because while aces will win about 80% of the time heads up, they lose much of their strength in multi-way pots. For example, if you're up against two opponents, your aces have shrunk from an 80% to a meager 66% favorite. And against four or more opponents, you're usually a pretty big underdog in the hand. In this example, you're only about 38% to win with your pocket rockets. Despite starting with the best possible hands, one of your four opponents will outdraw you by the river more often than not. This is a critical factor to remember when playing in low limit games, especially the no fold 'em hold 'em games common at the 3 6 level in casinos and micro limits online. If you're in late position with aces and kings, no matter how many times the pot's been raised, you need to be raising and re raising. Bring it to the cap if you can. However, if you're in a really aggressive game, one where raises and re-raises are happening almost every hand pre-flop, you may want to consider limping into the pot from early position with the intent of re-raising when it comes back around to you. You can only do this when you're almost certain that the pot will be raised behind you. Again, one of the key goals with aces and kings is to limit the field. You're also trying to get more money into the pot while you still have the best hand, but this isn't nearly as important as limiting the number of opponents that are involved in the pot. It's much better to have two opponents that paid four bets each than to have four opponents who paid two bets. Don't try to slow play your monster hands. It's a recipe for disaster. There's nothing worse than waiting for two hours to get your aces or kings, only to be outdrawn when somebody sucks out two pair on the river. The fewer players in the pot, the better off you are. Now with that said, you'll win more often with aces and kings than with any other hand even in multi-way pots. Just don't expect them to hold up unimproved more than half the time against a big field. In one of the later episodes in this series, we'll talk about mixing up your play, and when it may be appropriate to play these hands, and all hands for that matter, a little differently once in a while. Also, beware when an ace falls on the flop when you have kings, especially against weak players who will play any ace pre-flop into your raise. Don't be afraid to throw away your cowboys when an ace flops. Your opponents are more likely to have an ace in their hand than any other card in the deck, especially with all the preflop raises you put in. I know you waited forever before finally seeing your pocket kings, but save your chips for a better situation. In poker, saving bets is every bit as important as winning bets. Now, I'm not suggesting you just automatically fold when you see an ace on the board, but use your intuition and your reads on the other players to know when your kings are no good. You don't want to be drawing to only two outs, the two remaining kings in the deck, and paying off bets the whole way with only a 4% chance of outdrawing your opponent's overpair. Also, when you're playing in low stakes games, 
you often run up against what I call action players, who see all the raises and re-raises going on, and they want a piece of the action. These players will often play weak, speculative hands in these situations, hoping to flop a big hand or draw to win the now massive pot. I can't tell you how many times I've had my pocket aces cracked by a hand like 6-7 suited. These players are playing hands like this because their logic is that with all the preflop raises that are happening, their opponents have no outs. And this is because they're sharing all the big cards between them. The action players figure that if they're up against three people with hands like ace-king, their 7-6 offsuit is more likely to find a favorable flop, and the preflop raisers will give them lots of action, building an even bigger pot. Now this logic is flawed, but the fact that so many low stakes players think this way makes it absolutely critical that you pay attention post flop. Don't waste a lot of bets when it's obvious you've been outdrawn. You need to get good at reading the board texture, being especially wary of obvious flush and straight possibilities. New players often lose a lot of money by not noticing that their aces or kings have obviously become an expensive second best hand. One more thing with aces and kings, and this is kind of specific to no limit hold'em. This whole time I've been drumming into your head that you need to reduce the number of opponents when you have aces or kings. However, when you've got a monster pair, you want someone to play with you. If you don't get any action, you've just picked up the blinds with a monster hand, and that's a huge waste. The biggest mistake you can make with these hands is to just raise all in, if you won't get any callers. You want to make a pot size raise, which is the same thing you'd do with any big hand. This disguises the strength of your holding and allows your opponents the opportunity to make a big mistake by calling with hands far weaker than your aces or kings. So you don't want four opponents, but you don't want zero either. Your aces and kings want some action. One or two callers is best, so play accordingly. The next group of hands are the big pairs, queens and jacks. When you've got one of these pairs, you still almost always have the best hand pre-flop, but you're much more susceptible to overcards on the flop than you are with aces or kings. An overcard is a card higher in rank than your pair that falls on the flop, turn, or river, which if paired by one of your opponents, will beat your hand. So if you have pocket queens and an ace or king falls, that's an overcard, and it's the most likely way for your hand to be beaten. For this reason, it's absolutely imperative that you reduce the number of players in the pot. It's much better to pick up the blinds with your pocket queens than to have an ace or king fall on the flop and give you yet another expensive second best hand. Unless you catch a third queen or jack on the flop giving you a set, you're frequently going to have to lay down your big pair if an overcard flops in a multi-way pot. Raise and do whatever you can to protect your big pairs. Get your opponents to fold before the flop. Your goal is to fold players with weak holdings like king-10 or ace-5 suited. That way when an overcard flops, it's much less likely to hit someone. In low stakes games, play these hands carefully. They won't hold up very unimproved very often against the calling stations that you'll encounter at the lower limits. That's it for now. In our next episode, we'll take a look at ace-king, or big slick, which is a critical hand, as you'll see big slick staring at you more often than any of the big pairs, and often your whole stack or tournament fate will rest in the balance. Until next time, goodbye and good luck.